In the name of God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. Today's gospel reading is a very familiar passage to us. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. There are not many passages of scripture that have brought as much hope and comfort and reassurance as this one. It's often read at funerals as a voice of hope in the midst of despair and grief. The King James Version of the passage offers a similar comfort, perhaps more familiar to older generations. In my father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. It speaks of God's presence with us now and by implication in the future. It also speaks to our situation today. When we are isolated from one another, maybe in our rooms, our homes, our dwelling places, perhaps our mansions or other abodes, God offers to be present with us wherever we are. In January this year, my son Lachlan and I travelled to India, visiting the city of Calcutta in West Bengal and staying with the bishop there in the city. You might have read something about the trip in the North North Coast Anglican. Like all of India, Calcutta is being very badly affected by our current COVID-19 crisis. If you go to their diocesan Facebook page, you'll see videos there of the bishop and other uh, leaders of the diocese and other ministers handing out food and other supplies to people in the streets. They're in desperate situation. Under normal circumstances in India, more than 90 million people live on less than one dollar a day. Because of the shutdown, many can't even earn this amount and they receive little, if any, government assistance. And so COVID-19 has created a life and death struggle for, for millions there and in other countries as well, even for those who don't have the virus. The Indian government defines the homeless as those who live on pavements, roadsides, in temples, railway platforms, staircases, on the street, in pipes, and other open places. While estimates of the number of homeless persons in India seem to vary quite a lot, we do know that over 18 million children are homeless in India, 18 million. There's a shortage of about 19 million houses in the country And while the number of homeless people in the country as a whole is disputed, we do know that in the capital of New Delhi alone, there are three million homeless persons. I wonder how this imagery of home and dwelling place feels uh, to those homeless persons. But even here on the north coast, the Anglicare rental affordability survey has once again shown a chronic and severe shortage of affordable rental properties for people on the North Coast. And so that's a bit of a glimpse of homelessness. What about those who do have a home, but one which is far from safe for them? In Australia, on average, one woman a week is murdered by her current or former partner. One in five women have experienced emotional abuse by a current or former partner since the age of 15. Violence perpetrated by an intimate partner in the home is the cause of more illness, disability and death than any other factor for women in Australia aged 25 to 44. That's 
a very disturbing statistic. And during COVID-19, domestic violence cases have risen by more than 25% in some places. So for many, home is not a safe place. Still for others, there's not only no safe home, but dislocation from their homeland altogether. The United Nations estimates that there are about 71 million forcibly displaced people living in the world today. This includes about 41 million internally displaced persons, 25 million refugees, and about 4 million asylum seekers, all displaced from their homelands because of war, civil unrest, oppression, natural disaster, or climate change. Not very encouraging or happy statistics to be talking about on Mother's Day. I apologize for that. So while these images of home and place are comforting for many, this is not the case for everyone. For some, home is unsafe. For others, home is just something that they've never known and quite possibly never will know. The Greek word translation, translated as homes or dwelling places or mansions here in, verse, in chapter 14, verse 2, monai, means abiding place or stopping place. Uh, the Latin equivalent is mansio, giving us the mansions from the King James Version. This place, dwelling place or mansion, is not our own home, but is, of course, the Father's house. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. We read here that there is room for everyone in the Father's house. There's no housing shortage there. And Jesus is going to prepare a place there for the disciples. All of them are to share in this promise. And this intimacy of relationship with Jesus bestows on his in immediate disciples is to be the experience of all disciples, not just the original few. The shared intimacy of God. We read too that the Father and Son will make their home with the disciples. The Holy Spirit too will abide with them and in them and they will have the peace that Jesus gives them. All this we read in today's Gospel. So the needs of all who come will be served by a gracious host. This is surely good news. The good news here for us, confined to our homes at the moment, and to those for whom home is a strange, unknown, or even threatening place, is that Jesus is using the language of home and place here for a relationship. The disciples in this story, and we as disciples hearing this story much later, can claim these promises as being for us as well. The promise of his presence with us can help us to overcome alienation, fear, isolation, and dislocation. These abundant promises made here by Jesus are poured out without distinction. Wherever we may be, in our own home, on the streets of Calcutta or some other city, or in a refugee camp, he will come to us and will abide in us. So the scripture, let not your hearts be troubled, that we hear today, is good news for you wherever you are. The ultimate place where your alienation, fear, isolation, or dislocation can be overcome is available to you now through this journey with Jesus. And yet we need to work for a better world. With a sense of a world with a sense of belonging in terms of place, and a sense of security 
in terms of relationships that would characterize the kingdom that we seek. And as I said, that Anglicare survey once again showed us that we've got a lot to do even in our local area here on the north coast in terms of providing homes, affordable homes, rental properties and others for people in our local community. This in itself is an awesome task, but I'm drawn to verse 12. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do and, in fact, will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. So we are challenged, not just to follow, but also to work with Jesus in his mission for the world so that through our lives we may bring glory to him. Let us pray. Come, O Holy Spirit of God, and make within us your dwelling place and home. May our darkness be dispelled by your light and our troubles calmed by your peace. May all evil be redeemed by your love all pain transformed through the suffering of Christ and all dying glorified by his risen life.